to Snoozecast, the podcast designed to help you fall asleep. Find us on snoozecast.com and follow us on Instagram at snoozecast to find behind the scenes content. If you'd like to get an email once a week with upcoming sleep stories and other news, subscribe to the newsletter at snoozecast.com. This episode is brought to you by Silk Neckties. Tonight, we'll read from How to Make Money by John V. Dunlap, published in 1922. This guide to making money may have served up inspiration to the entrepreneurial-minded of the day. The schemes include starting a neighborhood pantry, along with candy making, donut making, starting a kindergarten, and editing an interesting column in a newspaper. get cozy. Close your eyes. Relax your body into the softness of your bed. Now, take a few deep Neighborhood Pantry. This plan offers an opportunity to enter the grocery business on $25 capital. The first step is to install shelves in a closet or pantry, covering them with plain white paper. Next, go to a wholesale grocery store and purchase 25 pounds of tea. 25 pounds of soda, 25 bars of laundry soap, 25 bars of toilet soap, 6 and a quarter pounds of pepper, 25 small bags of table salt, 25 pounds of lump starch, 25 bottles of wash blue. The next step is to have printed a few hundred bills as shown. Either mail these bills or distribute them by hand to each home you wish for customers. Distribute the day before you open. In addition to making 25% profit on each sale, you can establish dozens of good customers your first day. It is very essential that you use the brands of soap which are the best sellers in your town, and that you state the trade name of each article on your bills. It goes without saying that in no case should you list the regular price higher than the stores are selling. Tea happens to be one of the most profitable articles in a grocery store, and this fact enables you to make this liberal offer. Free, free, free. The Jones Neighborhood Pantry will open for business Saturday, September 1st. As an introductory offer, we will give the first 100 customers who either call in person or telephone their order absolutely free one bar of velvet soap. Regular price, 10 cents. One bar of satin soap. 15 cents, one pound of soda, 10 cents, one quarter pound of pepper, 15 cents, one bag of table salt, 10 cents, and so on. The total value of these articles is 75 cents, and they are all everyday necessities which you buy nearly every week. Ceylon tea regularly sells for $1.20 per pound, but we have reduced the price for this sale to 90 cents, and to each person buying one pound of this extra high-quality tea at 90 cents a pound, we will give absolutely free the above-listed necessities, which will cost you 75 cents at any store in town. 
Here is our telephone number, and we will deliver your order or call in person at the Neighborhood Pantry, 123 Main Street. From this point, your next step is to explain to each buyer of this special offer that you are opening a small store and will carry such staples as soap, sugar, rice, and coffee. Each Saturday, make a special sale of something to keep people talking about you. Three or four dollars per week spent with a printer in printing handbills announcing your special sale will keep customers coming to your store and keep people advertising you by talking. Do a strictly cash business and you will find your original $25 investment will grow into many hundreds of dollars in the course of a year. You will be surprised to see how quickly you will find yourself the owner of a real store selling everything. But remember, you must sell for cash, give prompt service, and fair and courteous treatment. $10 required. How to make money making candy. Get a candy recipe book and practice making bonbons, fudge, peanut brittle, etc. until you learn to make delicious candy. Make up about $10 worth and visit some store with samples. Ask them to put a box in their candy case and pay for it when they sell it. Have a neat card printed as follows. Made in Mrs. Brown's Kitchen by Mrs. Brown, right here in Belleville. It is fresh and delicious. Try it. If your candy is good, people will buy it, and you will have no trouble in getting all the stores to buy all you can make. One woman started on this small scale and owns a large candy factory today. Would you like to own a shirt factory? Every man has trouble buying a shirt that will fit him. One wise girl knew this and turned it into a real profit. She went to a local dry goods store and secured samples of 30 or 40 different kinds of shirt material. She made an arrangement with the store to allow her 15% discount on everything she bought. Next, she visited the various offices and stores and secured orders for custom-made shirts. She displayed her beautiful line of patterns and also a shirt all made up, showing the quality of workmanship. Next, she took the man's measurements and he selected the pattern. She would solicit orders one day per week and make shirts five days per week. In a short time, she was receiving mail orders and telephone orders. Every man in town wanted her to make his shirts. Within a few weeks, she had employed six girls to help make shirts. Then, she bought her material direct from the factory and received bottom prices. Today, she owns a custom-made shirt factory. Today, dozens of girls work for this little genius. Each girl has one special thing to do. Can you make neckties? To convince yourself of the tremendous profit in making and selling neckties, just get the price of a yard of necktie silk and see how many dollar neckties you can make out of it. Did you ever examine a necktie? It is the simplest thing in the world to make. Buy enough silk to make about 12 patterns. Use these for samples to show businessmen. They will sell like hotcakes. You can make 50 cents per tie profit. 
As your business grows, hire employees to make ties and employ pretty neat ones to take orders. How you can edit an interesting column in your local newspaper. Go to the advertising manager of your local newspaper and buy one column of space to be used each day. Head the column, Bargains Betty Ross Found Yesterday, for women only. Next, go out on a general shopping tour. When you run across something that appears to be an unusual bargain, or something very new and attractive, tell the storekeeper you will include it in your editorial tomorrow if he cares to pay you your regular rates of so much per inch. Your description of the article will depend upon how many inches of space he is willing to pay for. Your charge per inch should be about double the amount you pay the newspaper. The value of this advertising is much greater than the average advertisement, since it appears to be a news item. Women will learn to watch for the bargains and new things you list, and it will be a genuine service to both women and storekeepers, as well as very profitable for you. Suppose you sell 25 inches of space each day at $1 per inch. The space would cost you 50 cents per inch, so you would make $12.50 per day. Here's an example. Bargains Betty Ross found yesterday for women only. The leader store has received an assortment of white blouses in many pretty patterns, which they are offering at $2.79. I find this price about $1 lower than the regular price for this quality of blouse. The Star Furniture Company is offering small rugs at two and a half feet across for $4 each. The patterns are excellent copies of oriental designs and are a great bargain at this price. The duplex department store has just received 40 models of hand beaded crepe de chine frocks in all the latest colors, which will undoubtedly go very quickly to the wise early shoppers. Signed, Betty Ross. P.S. Telephone me at Main246 if you desire information regarding where to buy. My services are free, and I am always glad to become acquainted with my readers. Tea Room and Gift Shop The tea room idea has become a permanent fixture in the average town. Women look for them and patronize them regularly. There seems to be a tendency toward tea rooms of the colonial type. Read the monthly women's magazines, and you will find in most of them a column devoted to descriptions of tea rooms. Rooms In a recent magazine, there appeared an article written by a girl who had made a tremendous success operating rooming houses. Here was her plan. She found ten girls who were rooming at private homes and taking their meals out the same as she. She told these girls if they were willing to pay her two weeks' rent in advance, she would rent a home and furnish it. Each girl was to have a large bedroom completely furnished and was to have access to a well-equipped kitchen and laundry. Cabinets were provided in the kitchen for each girl to keep her food and utensils in, and a large refrigerator was also installed, which was always full of ice. Two large rooms downstairs were furnished as a parlor and reading room. With her first two weeks' rent, 
which she collected in advance, she paid one month's rent for the house and made her first payment on the furniture which she bought on the installment plan. Today she is operating six of these houses and is now serving meals to each roomer. How would you like to sell real estate? Here is one woman's account. Two years ago, one of our neighbors moved away unexpectedly, so did not have time to sell their house. They told me I could have all above $5,500 that I could sell it for. I put a for sale sign on the house, but made no sale. Next, I ran a small for sale want to add, but still no results. Then I had a picture taken of the house and had 2,000 handbills printed fully describing it. I distributed them all over town and posted many on fences and telegraph poles. Within one week, I had dozens of people come to look at the house and sold it for $6,500. My total expense was $4.90. My total profit was $1,000. My advice is to go into the real estate business. Go out and find houses for sale then make the owner a proposition to sell them. My profits this year will run over $5,000 clear. Money in Dying Here is a profitable business you can get into without capital. Go to your pharmacist and buy a few packages of dye. Experiment by coloring old clothes or rags. When you learn how to do the work perfectly, either advertise in the want to add column or solicit work by personal calls. Everyone has clothes, curtains, carpets, or something which can be made to look good as new if they were only dyed. The cost of the dyes is negligible. It is practically all profit. Kindergartens Why doesn't some clever girl start a kindergarten of culture? In addition to the regular kindergarten course, devote one half hour each day to teaching the children the correct way to eat and act upon all occasions. The idea will undoubtedly be successful. For the student, in almost every town and city, there are homes where the children are just at the age to prevent the mother and father from going out to the theater, church, or parties in the evening. These people cannot afford to keep a maid, but could and would pay $2 an evening to a reliable girl or woman to come in and stay with the children once a week. Why not spend $2 in one ads telling these people about your plan? It would be easy to get six families who would pay you $2 each per week, Monday at the Smith's, Tuesday at the Browns, etc. This is especially good for students, since the children will go to bed by 8 o'clock and the remainder of the evening can be spent quietly studying or reading. If you live in a city, there is hardly a single firm of any size which does not have a quantity of statements at the first of each month or advertising matter to be mailed 
which overtaxes their regular office force. Many in the city have started mailing houses. They make arrangements with these firms to address their envelopes, sign and fold the letters, insert in envelope, seal, stamp, and mail them. It requires absolutely no capital to start this business, provided you will turn one room of your house into an office. With practice, you can address 1,200 envelopes per day with pen and ink. The charge for this work ranges between $3 and $4 per thousand. The rate for folding a one-page letter is 70 cents per thousand. 35 cents per thousand for inserting it in the envelope. 35 cents per thousand for sealing the envelope. 35 cents per thousand for stamping. And 35 cents per thousand for mailing. Most mailing houses charge 35 cents per motion for folding, inserting, sealing, stamping, and mailing. So in arriving at a rate for a piece of work, you just determine the number of motions required. Each fold and each insert is counted one motion. As your business increases, employ help and you will soon be operating an extensive office. Lampshades. The actual material cost of making a silk lampshade that retails for $15 is about $5. Anybody who can sew will find making lampshades an exceedingly simple matter. All department stores sell the wire frame and transparent silk in many colors and designs which can be bought at any good dry goods store. The sales plan is this. Make arrangements with a department store or any other store who will display them to sell them on commission. For instance, you allow them $5 profit on a $15 shade. If you show good taste in selecting designs and colors, you can build up a very profitable business in a short time. There is also a constant demand for a shade made of cardboard, hand tinted in watercolors, which makes an excellent imitation of genuine parchment. Donuts. In a middle western town, a certain woman discovered the secret of making old fashioned donuts that would simply melt in your mouth. Neighbors soon learned of these delicious donuts and insisted that every time she made them, she would make a few dozen extra, which they bought. She decided to go into the donut business. She rented a small place about the size of a small shoeshine parlor right on the busiest corner and equipped the window with a kettle of lard on a gas hot plate. Everything was painted white, and she was dressed in white. She fried donuts to order. Customers stood in line, waiting for their donuts to fry. It proved a tremendous success. Today, she owns a large, fully equipped bakery where she bakes everything, usually made in a bakery. To which of these classes do you belong? Class number one. Are you a stenographer, typist, bookkeeper, 
or an office clerk of some kind who goes to work at a certain time every morning, rain or shine? Do you take a few sandwiches along and eat lunch at your desk or in a restroom? Or do you go to a cheap restaurant? You have a certain time to stop working each day. Do you dread the long afternoon? How lonesome and monotonous. Checking figures, typing letters, filing papers, or doing some other routine work which you have done so often. How you long for five o'clock to come. Not because you are lazy, but because you are human. Because it is not human for anyone to go on and on doing the same monotonous work day after day without becoming weary. And then Saturday comes. How much is in your pay envelope? When you go out on Sunday and see so many girls wearing fine clothes and associating with cultured people, what do you think? Do you think of your clothes, your kind of friends, your home life, and your meager earnings? What are you looking forward to? Perhaps you are being led to believe that you are going to be promoted. Stop and think. Suppose you are promoted. What will it amount to? True, you might then be able to wear a little better clothes and not be quite so pinched for money. But after all, nothing else will change. Class number two. Are you employed in a factory or at some other kind of work which you hesitate to acknowledge when you meet a new acquaintance? Or are you employed in someone's home doing domestic work? Class number three. Are you shut up behind a counter in some store, displaying a forced smile to shoppers who say and do things which belittle you beyond endurance? Class number four. Are you too proud to work? Are you one of those who come from a family who have tried to maintain their local social identity by imitating the practices of people with means? Have you led yourself to believe that you will be classed as one of the common herd if you engage in a commercial endeavor? Are you blindly applying 18th century customs to a period when commercial aggressiveness is a mark of distinction? You too have two roads open to you. The first one is to continue staying at home, depriving yourself of the luxuries and happiness in life, and be regarded as an aristocrat by two or three dozen people who don't know the difference between an aristocrat and a hippopotamus. The other road open to you is to stop trying to keep up an outward appearance at the cost of depriving yourself of happiness. Open your eyes and look about you. Our plan will not only bring you prosperity and plenty, but will actually pave the way for you to accomplish the higher ideals which you are dreaming about. Stop living for the benefit of your friends or to keep up a family tradition which is rendering every generation of your family weaker. What every girl would like to do. Get up in the morning when you have your sleep out. Arrange your working hours to suit your convenience. Engage in some kind of employment that you could do at home. Earn enough money to buy beautiful clothes, live in a comfortable home, and command all the other comforts and luxuries incidental to a happy life. 
we offer the outline of a plan which offers an opportunity for you to live the life so much wished for by others. You can sit right in your home and earn two or three times what your present position pays you without one half the effort. You will be your own boss. You can start to work in the morning when you feel like it and stop when you feel like it. You can sit in your own bedroom in your negligee or dress any other way you please. If you want to accomplish big things and operate a large office, you can do so. What could be a more ideal situation than this? No labor to mar your hands. The cleanest, most enjoyable, and most profitable work anyone can engage in. The only qualification necessary is to be able to read and write. Here is the plan. We will send you a quantity of folders which tell all about the Book of Good Manners and the Woman's Library. We will also send you a quantity of envelopes. You address these envelopes to all the girls and women in your vicinity. You can get their names from the telephone directory. Next, you insert these advertising folders in the envelopes which you have addressed and mail them with a one cent stamp. We also send you a quantity of small envelopes which you address to yourself and enclose with the folder together with an order which reads as follows. Free coupon. I hereby enclose three dollars as full purchase price of the book of good manners. In addition, I am to receive absolutely free the woman's library consisting of six books as follows. Clean talks on avoided subjects. How to prepare and serve a meal. Color harmony and design in dress. How to make money. And the book of culture.